This is a story of a companion by the name of Marthad ibn Abi Marthad al-Ghanawi radiyallahu anhu. Marthad radiyallahu anhu, he lived in Mecca and he had a girlfriend in Mecca, her name was Anaq. And of course, they weren't married, so they had a relationship in where he would spend nights with her, he would spend time with her, he would drink with her, and so on. A few years go by, and Islam comes, and he accepts Islam. And the Hijrah takes place to al Madina. So eventually, he had no other choice but to sacrifice his relationship with this girl, Anaq. He sacrificed that relationship for the sake of Allah, and he migrated with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from Mecca until he reached al Madina, and all the other Sahaba radiallahu anhum did the migration as well. A few months go by in Madina. It was very difficult for Marthad radiallahu anhu to give up what he gave up. I mean, there was intense and strong love between them. So when he's in Medina, the problem is that in Mecca, there are still prisoners of the believers that as they were trying to escape Mecca, they were captured by Quraysh and they were imprisoned and they were tortured. So when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam arrives to Medina, the first thing he does is that he selects and he chooses some of the Sahaba that were strong, that were tough, and he chose them so that he sends them back to Mecca so they can go into Mecca and free the prisoners of the believers and get them out of trouble. So he and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is choosing some Sahaba and he chooses from among them Marthad al-Ghanawi radiyallahu anhu. Marthad was a tough man, he was strong. He's selected for this mission to go and free some of his brothers that are still trapped in Mecca. So now he narrates the story and he says, I left Medina and I began to approach Mecca. It was a full moon's night. So it was a bright night. I went until I reached one of the walls of Mecca and he stuck himself to the wall because obviously he doesn't want to be found and he doesn't want to be seen and he began to walk alongside this wall and he says as I'm walking I see Anaq she saw me and she said Marthad she recognized him from his shadow Marthad is that you and he kept quiet he didn't say anything she said again Marthad and now this time he gave in and he said yeah it's me so then she said to him oh well Welcome. She's remembering the old days she had with Martha radiallahu anhu. So she said to him, come tonight, come over and let's sleep over my place tonight. So without hesitation, radiallahu anhu, he stood right in front of her and he said, Ya Anaq, Allah Azza wa Jal has made zina, has made adultery impermissible. It's haram. I'm in a different religion and things are very different here. That is absolutely incorrect for me to pursue with you and go home tonight. So she, being a disbeliever, she's got no idea what this halal and haram is and what this zina is. So she's confused. And she said to him, what do you mean, zina? It's as though she felt like she's been accused in her dignity and her honor. So she said to him, Listen, if you don't come tonight with me, I'm going to scream out from here that you're the one who's coming into Mecca, picking up the prisoners and freeing them. But he heard that and he began to run. He's running towards a mountain in Mecca called Al Khandama. And she screams out, Oh, people of Mecca, this is the man who comes in and carries your prisoners and he frees them. So he began to run as fast as he can. He gets to the mountain Al Khandama and he hides in a cave that he knows. He was a Meccan boy, so he knows around. And he says, I can count almost eight men of the strong men of Mecca. They were on their horses and they're following me. And they're following and they're on the mountain and they're searching for him. And they said they spent a while on the mountain and he's hidden in the cave and he's really silent. And he says, until they gave up the search, so everyone got onto their horses, about to go down the mountain and just go back to their houses. And he says, except for one of him, he says one of them, he came and he wanted to urinate. So he began to urinate and he urinated on my head and Allah blinded him that he did not see me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him a miracle. So they went and what would you think Marthad radiallahu anhu is going to do? He did not just pick himself up and go straight back to Medina. He does what I upset and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his brother in Mecca that is waiting for him. So he goes back into Mecca once again and this time he gets there successfully. He finds the man chained on the floor. So he unties him basically and he puts him on his back. Remember Marthad was a strong man and he walks with him until he reaches a place known as Al-Idhkhir which is just outside Mecca. 
once he gets there, he puts the Sahabi down and he cuts off the iron fetters that were on his feet and the chains that were in his hand and so on, so that the Sahabi anhu could walk on his own. And then they make their way until they reach Al Madinah. Alhamdulillah, successful, he got his brother released. And the next day, he comes to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's going to ask him a question. You wouldn't even imagine he's going to ask this question. He says to him, Ya Rasulullah, please give me permission that I go back to Mecca and get married to my ex, my girlfriend, Anaq. Give me permission to go. And by the way, she almost killed him. But this is the intense love that was between them. He says, give me permission to go back and marry her. In the narration, it says that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam remained silent. Why did he remain silent? Even though the answer is very clear that it's not allowed for a believer to get married to a disbeliever. And that's exactly what Anaq is. So the answer is, Martha, no, goodbye. But the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam doesn't answer. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was feeling what Martha Radiallahu Anhu was going through. It's not easy. He loved the girl. And so just to dismiss him and just give him a bold answer, look, it's haram, just go. He's not going to swallow that really easy. And he's going to remain hurt all his life. When Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he acknowledges this sensitive situation. Someone has loved a girl for all his life in Mecca and he spent most of the time with her. And he's coming to you for direction. How are you going to answer this situation? Very sensitive. It was so sensitive that Allah Azzawajal sends down an ayah from above seven heavens to treat this case of Martha radiallahu anhu. الزاني لا ينكح إلا زانية أو مشركة والزانية لا ينكحها إلا زان أو مشرك وحرم ذلك على المؤمنين. النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم receives this wahi. He gets up and he faces Martha and he says to him, Martha, Allah has just revealed the adulterer shall not marry anyone except an adulteress or a disbeliever, and the adulteress shall not get married to anyone except an adulterer or a disbeliever. And Allah has made this. Is impermissible upon the believers. Don't get married to her, O Martha. Martha radiallahu anhu listens to this ayah and he listens to the advice of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he gets up and he is so happy and he is full of pleasure and contentment from the inside. You know why? Because Allah declared him from among the mu'mineen. Allah said, "Wa hurrima dalika ala al-mu'mineen." Ya Martha, you're from the mu'mineen and you're not supposed to do that. He gets up and it's as though nothing has ever entered his heart of love in his life. These are the true followers of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. No matter how much they're attached to something, they would let it go in an instant if they knew that this would displease Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Martha radiallahu anhu understood, if I pursue in this marriage, it'll upset Allah, it'll anger Allah, it'll earn me Allah's punishment, it's not worth it. So he lets it go and he moves forward in life. And look how beautiful this is. Martha radiallahu anhu, after this incident, he lived one and a half half years. He could have lived that one and a half years in depression. But because he made the decision to step over his own desire and to step over his own nafs and what he wants for himself for the sake of Allah and in obedience of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, look what he gained radiallahu anhu. Number one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him a miracle during his life. And that is that when that person of Mecca urinated on him and did not see him. Number two, Allah azza wa jal would bless Marfad radiallahu anhu that he would place him under his shade on the day of judgment. You know the hadith in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says that one of the seven types that get to be shaded under the shade of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala on the day of judgment is a person in which a woman came to and she called him and he said to her, Inni Allah. That's exactly what Martha radiallahu anhu did. Further to this, Martha radiallahu anhu pursued in life and he went ahead in his knowledge and he became an expert in the Quran. Imagine he kept recalling that woman. What would have happened to him? No knowledge, nothing would have happened to him. But because he put it behind his back, he became a student of knowledge of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to the point where after ye, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sends an army, he was an Amir on an army that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sent to fight the disbelievers for a betrayal they did to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And it is over there where he attained martyrdom. Look how much he gained because he understood what it means to be a follower of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam.